My name is Phil Passantino. I grew up in Wayne, New Jersey. I wanted to be a priest when I was a kid. I also wanted to be a musician, a rock star, and an astronaut. And I, I kind of pieced those different things together into a career. I was raised in Wayne, New Jersey. Um, I started going to Catholic school when I was nine, and I was very open to spirituality. And I used to compete with my friends who could read the most Lives of the Saints books from the school library. And I was really into these fascinating stories about spirituality, and they kind of had an adventure sense to them too. And uh, so I wanted to be a priest, but I also liked girls. And uh, <laughs> you can edit whatever you can do. Okay. I originally studied music and sound recording in uh, upstate New York near Buffalo, a college called SUNY Fredonia. I also read a lot about Eastern philosophy and spirituality when I was there. That was kind of my hobby, uh, looking into that kind of stuff. Um, but I was gearing up for a career as a recording engineer and a musician and hopefully a recording artist. I tried that path and uh, I, I ran into a lot of obstacles, uh, especially working in New York City in the studio business. It just didn't feel like it was for me. But meanwhile, doors were opening up for me uh, in ministry. I became a youth group minister at a Methodist church in uh, Little Falls, New Jersey. And I was thinking about being a, a minister or a priest of some kind. I was searching different faiths and eventually decided to become an interfaith minister. I was ordained uh, in New York City. And uh, since 2004, I've been uh, officiating lots of weddings, baptisms, funerals. I do a lot of church services. I've spoken in churches from Ireland to California to all throughout the tri-state area here. I've been drawn to the music of Africa for a long time, since around 2001 or so. Heard some amazing music from this country called Mali in Western Africa uh, on a late night NPR show. And it just was very mesmerizing. It's had, it had an ancient sound to it, but also was very modern at the same time. <laughs> years learn more about this culture in Mali and eventually I traveled there in January 2010 I just went by myself went to a music festival there I brought my guitar with me and from the moment I landed I was pretty much interacting with other musicians even in the ca in the taxi on the way to where I was staying I, you know I was beatboxing and this guy was rapping in French it was just a very musical country it's kind of like the Nashville of Africa they have a very simple life they don't have necessarily all the money and, and resources that we have here but I wouldn't want them to become another America by any means. I think it's beautiful the way it is with their dirt roads and the people in the streets. Just, it's just very full of life and uh, this amazing music and culture that they have. So, you know, I kind of felt called to go there, even maybe in a missionary sense. But really, what ended up happening was, you know, I went there and they missionaried to me. They taught me about a simple way of life and the beauty of life, stuff that we definitely could learn about here in America. In the 1990s, I really started to get into rap music, starting with the Beastie Boys and KRS-One and Nas. And I was really inspired, you know, since I was a musician, I felt inspired to write rap, rap lyrics, rap music, come up with beats and stuff like that. So I actually formed a rap group with my brother in 2000 or so, and I was MC Jaguar, and he was Uncle Dirty. And we made a few CDs together. We played a lot of um, gigs all around New Jersey and New York from like 2000 to 2006, and wrote some interesting songs. And actually, I was rapping about taking care of the environment before it became cool to talk about the environment. So I felt like I was a pioneer in green hip hop. I tried to be, you know, a professional musician for many years of original music. You know, I had a problem with tendonitis with my hands for about like a good 10 years that I was wrestling with that, if not more. And it took a while to find exercises and a way of playing where I could work through it. So I wanted to start gigging and doing my original songs in the early 2000s. And uh, I guess I fell into doing these nursing home uh, gigs. I would play for like adult daycare centers, nursing homes, senior centers. And it was a way to kind of get my feet wet. In the cold winter weather, season the cream in the city since the morning. They went to the census registry. Oh, my child, be mine. I'm coming to visit you. All the blessings that you bestow, my little baby is here. And so little by little, my, my arm got strengthened and I was just working through it and I just, I just had such a great time because I would learn from the seniors what kind of songs they loved. So 
I fell in love with music from the 1930s, from the Great Depression, stuff I didn't really know about. And I did this for a while just by myself for like a good, I don't know, two or three or four years. And then I started collecting my other friends to come with me. Uh, my friend uh, Moses Johnson first, he came. Oh yeah, playing with the Mick Jaguars is quite a uh, fun thing. We do all kind of ways we play. We play a, a duet sometimes, both playing drums and guitars and bass. We do a triple sometimes, a three piece with a drums, bass, guitar. Sometimes we do four piece, Mooney on the keyboards and then uh, do a five piece when Marin sings with us and then uh, we're hoping to get a six piece. He used to try to get him to do wheelchairs, uh, uh, wheelies in their wheelchairs competition, but got reprimanded by one of them nurses and uh, ain't do that much anymore. And then we gradually grabbed my friend Jim Mooney from college. I've known Phil since uh, college. We went to SUNY Fredonia together. Um, and then I didn't see him for a lot of years. I moved around a lot. And then when I moved to uh, New Jersey, uh, a friend of a friend had made contact with him, and so we started playing together. I chose Phil to officiate uh, my wedding as, uh, as Reverend Phil. Uh, we called upon him for his musical skills as well. We did a little musical number during the service. Just a really great, positive guy. Everybody loves Phil. I've never met anyone who met Phil who didn't think he was just the greatest guy. I've been to see him perform as a minister. I've been to the weddings and just videotaped him for um, you know, YouTube and advertisement purposes. I've been to the senior gigs, you know, help them set up like a roadie, but I, I love it. So, you know, it's, I just want to support him and everything that he does is, is great and amazing. So we got this loose group going and we called it the Mick Jaguars and we played all these gigs uh, throughout 2011. We played all over uh, New Jersey doing these senior center gigs and the people loved it because they only signed up, they're actually just paying for me to come play but I brought all my friends as musicians as like a bonus, you know, so they didn't even know they were getting a full band. And then we'd walk in with all our equipment and they just loved it, it really made their day. And we had a blast. I mean, every gig, we just, we're just, I'm smiling through the whole show. I just love it. This year I'm actually in the midst of recording a CD of new songs and I do want to record the Mick Jaguars uh, singing some of these uh, Colombian songs that we're doing which definitely make people want to dance. I also have a lot of new originals that I'm recording. I'm actually going to launch a, a fundraising campaign like a crowdfunding campaign on the internet soon because I'm trying to raise money just to be able to go back in the studio and finish these songs so I'm really excited about that. like a feather duster as you spin around the Virgo super cluster of 47,000 galaxies made of the same stuff as you and me.